My name is Kent C. Dodds and I teach people how to do whatever I do. And right now what I do is build MCP servers. And so that's why I'm here. I want to talk about MCP, but I, I want to talk about the, my vision for the future, maybe different from your vision for the future. And that's what makes this conference so interesting is we don't really know what the future is going to be like. And before we even have a conversation about what uh, we, like what things excite us about MCP, we have to come to a common understanding of where we're coming from and what uh, we expect the future to be like uh, and what part of the MCP spec that we're really interested in or the implications. Before we get into any of that though, it's been a little bit, I'm gonna ask you to do something. Please stand up if you're physically able to join us. If you're not, that's fine. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, stand up. You're gonna put your arms out in front of you like this. Yeah, throw all the food on the floor. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna put your arms out in front of you and squat down. This is called an air squat. This is exercise. Yeah, it's good for you. Um, this is, gets the blood flowing. So we're gonna do 12 of these. You're gonna count out loud with me. You ready? Here we go. One, you gotta count out loud too. Two, three, four. And this is like a choose your own adventure. Go really low if you want a good exercise or just like a little dip. Seven, I think I lost count. One, no, just kidding. <laughs> Nine. 10, just two more, 11 and 12. Okay, stretch up over your head as high as you can then over to one side and then over to the other. All right, awesome, you can sit down, that's good. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I am here to talk about problems. Um, originally my talk was gonna be suggesting solutions and I got feedback that you all would nitpick at my solutions. So instead I'm just gonna talk about problems because I think we can agree on some of those. First, I wanna talk about what is Jarvis. It's just rather a very intelligent system, which is what we call a backronym. They wanted Jarvis, and so they came up with random words that <laughs> sort of made sense. But it comes from Iron Man. How many Iron Man fans are in the room? Yeah, Iron Man is. Like, he's the guy that's like such a jerk, but you still like him somehow? I don't know how Tony Stark manages this, but he has an assistant, an AI assistant called Jarvis that does just a bunch of stuff for him. So let's, let's talk about what does Jarvis do? He's a personal assistant, kind of the stuff that we want in our AI assistants of, of the future. I think a lot of people would like an assistant who can kind of just do everything for you. But with Jarvis, he can also assist in combat. So I hope none of you have use cases like that. Uh, system control, emergency response, engineering support. We use AI for engineering support, right? Uh, VS Code, cursor, windserve, and research and analysis, and even companionship. He's like a friend and he's very sarcastic and witty and it's fun. He does everything. Jarvis does everything. And in, in fact, Jarvis has access to robots so he can like get into the real world and start doing stuff. And I would like to have a Jarvis. I think that would be really cool. I'm okay with it just staying in the virtual world. Maybe one day we can do the robot thing. But yeah, Jarvis is cool. What is a Jarvis experience like though? What's it like to use Jarvis? Well, natural language. Using context to understand the, the commands that are issued. It's multimodal, so sometimes he's talking. In fact, most of the time, Tony is talking to Jarvis like just a, another person in the room. But he also texts on his phone. He's using gestures and things. Uh, so multimodal, immediate response. Even if the task is gonna take some time, Jarvis responds right away. Okay, now, like, I'm gonna process that or whatever. So that's also an important part of the Jarvis experience. Proactive, so Tony doesn't have to ask for a status update on some task. Jarvis will just proactively say, hey, I've got the status update for you. And uh, also anticipating needs like, hey, you've got a leak. Maybe you know, we need to fix that or something or I'll go fix it because I'm a robot and stuff. <laughs> uh, no configuration necessary. Everything is managed automatically behind the scenes, including authentication. Everything is just managed for Tony. I think that's an important part of the Jarvis experience as well. And then he's everywhere. It's the exact same assistant. No matter what context he is in, Jarvis is the same assistant in his car, in his house, in his office, in his suit. We don't really have Iron Man suits. Kind of hope we never get Iron Man suits. <laughs> but it's the same assistant everywhere. And I think that's a really important aspect of the Jarvis experience. 
we're experiencing a very exciting paradigm shift. This is where we get to my vision of the future, and you may disagree with me, but what I see right now, I, I should tell you, I'm a web developer. That's where I've been doing for the last decade, been teaching people how to build excellent web experiences. If you have gone through Epic React or Epic Web, some of you have come up and talked to me about that. Thank you so much, I appreciate that, and thanks for joining me on this journey to the AI world. But my web development experience tells me people access our services through browsers and we provide websites. And there are like three to five major browsers that regular non-technical people use and they use it to access all of the different websites that are available. We could talk about mobile, but I'm gonna ignore that because I'm a web guy. Um, so I think in the future, we're gonna have a Jarvis client, or in the MCP speak, that's your host application, and websites will turn into MCP servers. Now, I think actually what, uh, what Angie was talking about was really interesting, having an internal uh, client or host application that has internal tools, and I think that use case has a future for sure. But I think also, today we have web browsers that we use both for our personal use as well as for our internal application use. And so it makes a lot of sense to me that our Jarvis, whatever that ends up being, which has all the context of everything about our lives, would um, be used for everything. Just the one, and it's augmented by the MCP servers, the resources, the tools, and everything at, uh, that we need at that time. Oh, I, okay, I need, uh, I'm gonna work out and I want my Jarvis to help me work out. Okay, so he's gonna grab an MCP server that is associated to that and, and help me with my workout. Or I need to uh, plan a trip with my family, the qu quintessential agent. Uh, oh, there it is, the bingo. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the agentic example. Uh, okay, so he's gonna grab that. Oh, I uh, also, maybe I need a therapist or something, okay? Now he can augment him. I, I'm personifying AI, my apologies. It uh, can augment itself to serve whatever use cases or needs uh, that we have at the time. This is, I, I wanna be very clear, this is a pretty big um, impact on the way that we live our lives. And this, a lot of my opinions or, or thoughts or the actions that I take in the future, uh, or even now, are based on the fact that I think that this is where things are going. It's very, very exciting to think about that. But I'm here to talk about problems. How, what stands between where we are right now and getting to that eventual future that I'm so excited about? So here's probably the biggest problem of them all. Trust and privacy. When browsers showed up, people were like, uh, I, I don't think anybody first thought, oh sweet, I can access my bank information through this third party software. That will be so great. But now we do that all of the time. You install third party software and you go log into your bank and you don't expect that they're going to steal your credentials. In fact, you would expect that they won't and they have privacy policies and their regulations and things in place to make sure that they don't. And so I know that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know if I wanna hook up my PayPal to this LLM or something, right? But I mean, we're, we're already kind of doing that same sort of thing. There's this third party and we're, we're using them to facilitate these sorts of transactions. So I think that this is overcomable, that's my point. But we have a, a lot of work to get to that point where um, people, non-technical people feel comfortable with this. So on the client side, we've got a bunch of problems. There, uh, I, I don't want to have any user managed MCP servers. Users should not have to configure their MCP servers. Where did the JSON file thing come from? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, regular people are not gonna wanna do that and I don't wanna do it at all. I want them to be automatically selected and discovered. Angie gave a really good example of that. We both talk about the, the tool overloading problem and uh, Angie solved that and the team, I'm sure there are people working on it, but uh, Goose has solved that uh, by uh, selecting the necessary tools. And right now, Cloud AI, you can select the tools that you want, and um, that is great, but the computer should be smart enough to do that for me. Uh, we're, we're gonna actually go fast, so I accidentally hit it twice, but we'll just go with that. <laughs> uh, should be able to distinguish it between speakers. 
right? We should be able to have our Jarvis and maybe my wife and I are having a conversation. I've got my Jarvis, she's got her Jarvis and that, those Jarvises should know who is talking and, and what commands should be issued. That's kind of a big one that um, I don't know how many of you are that low level, but I hope you're in this room and solve that problem, please, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we should be able to switch modality. Um, we should be able to have proactive notifications. I told it to do this thing, come and do it for me. Uh, and, and let me know when we're done. We've talked about this problem a couple times today. Uh, and then I should not have to create a new conversation for everything. It should just automatically know whether the things I've talked about in the last couple seconds are relevant for this thing that I'm asking it to do. On the server side, we need a lot more quality MCP servers. And I think that's most of you are working on this problem. And uh, that is awesome. And my job is to teach people how to build really quality MCP servers uh, on Epic AI Pro. So that we're all working on that. Authentication authorization, that should all be managed automatically. And we saw some really cool demos of that exact thing. So that is exciting too. Background and scheduled tasks, we talked about a bit. Long-term memory and context uh, loading for the um, things that I've talked about before. Some of you are probably sitting here and thinking, Kent, I've already built this. You just need to try my thing. And so <clears throat> if that's you, please come talk to me. I would love to try it. But here are some tests that uh, you can try for yourself to, or like think about yourself. Can your thing do this? And if it can, then I'm really interested. And I, what I'm going to give you are prompts. And these are like one shot prompts, but I actually expect the experience to be a lot more conversational. But here are some examples of uh, some prompts. This is one I just had yet the other day. I want to see the latest Mission Impossible movie the in <coughs> theaters with my friends Josh Mack, Joel, Sean, J Julie Garrett, and Andy. Those are literally the friends that I am going to see the movie with. We've decided Saturday 31st in the evening is the best time for most of us. Please find a movie theater uh, that's showing Mission Impossible that evening sometime after eight and relatively close to all of us. Get, us tic uh, get tickets for seats close by one another, create a calendar event with details, and invite all of us. Oh, and let my friends know how much they owe me for a ticket. <laughs> Okay, so this is gonna be like a lot of different things, but ask yourself, is this impossible? No, of course it's not. We have the capability, and what's really cool is with MCP, we don't have to build an integration for every single thing that needs to happen here. Each one of the services can build their own, and then just natural integration can happen. And I don't wanna have to configure any of these servers. So what are the couple of things? I need an MCP server for my contacts, and for the movie theater, and for my lo location, relative to other people. Uh, also payment and uh, calendar events. Uh, that's probably one of our favorites. Uh, and then SMS. And all of these I don't wanna have to configure. Uh, maybe I configure it for the first time I'm using it, but I'll configure it with natural language, thank you. Uh, not with a JSON file or even a UI. Just like, it, it can be so much better. I've got a bunch of these, but I only have two minutes left. So we're gonna go through these kinda quick. Um, you can. I, I'm going to post, in fact, I actually posted on X and Blue Sky um, a blog post that's a blog post version of this talk and it has all these prompts. So I'm going to skip through these. Um, you're welcome, conference organizers. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so we, this one actually, I want to be really quick. Muni municipality, so like we're reserving a, a soccer field in my city. This is what makes MCP rock so much because there's no way I could convince Anthropic and OpenAI to add an integration for my city, but because now they don't have to, my city can uh, play in this world and I think that's really cool. So uh, also uh, it can personify a soccer coach and have memory and calendar again. And then I wanna improve my cardio. Uh, let's block out a 30 minute run and, and this is scheduled. Also this week, I don't wanna run during the rain. So we've got our favorite weather MCP that's like the hello world of MCPs. Um, it still is very relevant. Here's a good one right here. Give me directions to some place close by. Right here, UI. I am so sick of text. Uh, I want a UI. Sometimes text is great. Natural language, really great input mechanism. But my goodness, I want to be able to look at that, uh, those directions. I want a Google Maps sort of thing. Or Apple Maps, I don't care. I just want a UI. And we need UI, and, and that's going to happen for sure. We've talked about it a couple times today. I'm very excited about that. Um, now, pro proactive stuff as well. Jarvis should be able to talk to me. 
and should say, hey, you've been paying 30 bucks for a car wash, but you don't wash your car enough for that subscription. You want me to cancel it or schedule you a time to go wash your car? This is literally a thing I'm experiencing right now. Somebody tell me to cancel my subscription. So uh, yeah, all of these things are definitely possible, but I don't know of any clients that are able to do this sort of thing. Now, actually, this, this prompt is kind of fun. Uh, I've got net minus one second now. Um, but uh, I promise I wrote this prompt before Google showed basically solving this problem at uh, Google I.O. But anyway, let me wrap up. I want us to build Jarvis, and I think that we can do it. The technology is there. We can give Jarvis hands, and I want to teach you how to do that on Epic AI Pro. There you go. That's, that's my like, advertising for myself. So. Anyway, thank you so much. You can do it. Have a good one.